Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazhar, and today is 11th of May 2022. Right now, I am with the 11th Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is Physics 5054. Today, we have set our hearts to solve a uh, ATP paper, and we call it Paper 4, and we have selected May June 2012 uh, for one paper. This Paper 4 belongs from the Zone 1. The time allowed for this paper is uh, one hour. So let's start this paper. So on your screen, the paper to October, November 2012, 4-1 is showing up. So let's start. He says, a student investigates the behavior of a vibrating spring. The spring is suspended from a horizontal ro uh, rod. A mass is hung from the spring. Figure 1.1a shows the apparatus that is not vibrating. So this is that spring. And this is in the normal position. So when you will pull it down, for example, you have pulled it this much. This is the amplitude of the vibration you, because you have pulled it this much distance. So when you will release it, it will start vibrating. For around this mean position, it will go up, down, up, down, up, down. It will vibrate. The mass is pulled down a small distance as shown in the figure. As shown in the figure one. Point one B, when released, the mass vibrates up and down about its original position. The student takes readings to obtain the time T for one complete vibration. On the figure 1.1C, draw the mass at its highest position after the release. So when you will, you have pulled it below its mean position and when you will release it, obviously the distance you have pulled it down, the same distance it will go above the mean position. So we have to draw this shape here at 1.1c. So let me show you. I have drawn it. So I have tried to draw it. This, this uh, spring will be compressed. And the distance it has gone down, I have checked the distance of the bottom of this uh, weight from the mean position, same distance it goes above the mean position. So this is the diagram which you have to make. So I hope you understand. Okay, then he says, uh, mark the most suitable position for the student's eye when the student times the vibration. The student should be looking at the mean position. So the eye should be here at this level. I have drawn this. So you can see I have made the eye here, which is uh, perpendicular to the level of the mean position. So the next question they are asking is, uh, explain why the mass is pulled on only a small distance before being released. You see, you pull it uh, a small distance because if you pull it uh, more distance, so when you will release it, uh, what will happen? Uh, it will go so much high that, that this mass might be unhooked from this spring. Okay, so you pull it gently and a small distance because we want to observe its vibrations. So the, so, so the technical things can be that we do not want to cross the limit of the proportionality or limit of the elasticity is not crossed. So if you cross the limit of elasticity, what will happen? The spring will have a permanent deformation. So we do not want to cross this. Or another thing can be if you pull it down more, so when you will release it, the spring might uh, get unhooked, the mass might get, the load might get unhooked from the spring. So let me show you the answer also. So <clears throat> within the extension of the spring, within elastic limit, not permanently stretched, gives smooth oscillations. Load does not jumps off the spring. Spring does not become slack, okay? Okay, okay, so now we are going to the next question. He says, a student may use the time for the mass to complete 20 vibrations. Suggest so a reason why the student times 20 vibrations rather than one. You see, we always, uh, when we are noting down the time period for one oscillation, we do not do it directly. We always time uh, more vibrations, more than one vibration, like five vibrations, 10 vibrations, or 20 vibrations, or 15 vibrations, because, the more the vibrations you time, 
and obviously that time will be large and now that time as compared to the human reaction time will be quite large so the effect of the human reaction time on that time will reduce so if you try to time only a single vibration its time will be small as compared to the reaction time so its effect will be very large so to be more accurate we do this so let me show you it's a very technical thing human reaction time will have very little effect when we time 20 vibrations this increases the accuracy of the time period of the one vibration because you take the average of the 20 vibration and that give you the time period of one vibration so because you have time 20 vibration so now you will be more accurate as compared to when you directly measure the time of the one vibration the time when you directly time one vibration the reaction time the human reaction time will be a large part of that time and that creates error okay so uh, let me show you the reduce the human reaction error in the capital t more accurate t t too small gives average value of the t i hope you understand when the weight w of the mass is one newton the student times 20 vibration this is represented four times the following results are obtained so here we have one two three four five calculate the average value of the t the time for one complete vibration so for one complete vibration uh, we will add all these values and we will divide there are five observations so i will divide with the five so i will get the time and then I will divide it with the 20. Once I know the average of these, then I will divide them with the 20. So I will get the time period for one because the capital T represents the time for one vibration. So here you can see and small t means the time for the 20 of vibrations. I will take its average. I have added all these five values divided with the five. So I got 8.024 seconds. Then I divided with the 20 to find the time period for the one vibration. So when I divided 8.024, which was the average time for 20 vibrations, I get 0 0.4012 second. So it's 0 0.401 second up to two, up to three significant figures. So 0 0.401 second is the time period for the one vibration. So let's check. 0 0.401 is the right answer, sir. Okay. Then their question is calculate the T. We have to put that time, the time which you just calculated, we have to put that time here in that table. So that is 0 0.401. <clears throat> the experiment is repeated for a range of values of the, of the weight. The results are recorded in the figure 1.2 so we have changed the weight 1 newton 2 newton 3 newton 4 newton 5 6 newton and we have put that time of the oscillation here on the figure write your value use an suitable number of significant figures we have done this 0 0.401 we have entered it then he comes to the next part he says on the figure 1.3 plot a uh, plot a graph of the time in seconds on the y-axis against w in newtons on the x-axis start your axis uh, where t is equal to 0 0.3 second and the weight is equal to 0 newton draw a smooth curve of the best fit so here i will label this on the x-axis i will represent the weight w uh, or the load and here i will represent the time period of the one oscillation in seconds this axis is starting from 0 0.3 and uh, so i will ha i have to go 0 0.961 okay so we will label this axis and then we will plot those points okay so let me show you so you can see here i have put weight in the newtons one two three four five six seven and here 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 and one and then i will plot these points one comma 0 0.4 0 0.41 so put a dot here 2 comma 0 0.573 put a dot here and 3 comma 
थ्री कॉमा जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स नाइन सो द डॉट विल बी हेयर फोर कॉमा जीरो पॉइंट सेवन फोर कॉमा जीरो पॉइंट सेवन नाइन फोर कॉमा जीरो पॉइंट सेवन नाइन द डॉट विल बी हेयर फाइव कॉमा जीरो पॉइंट एट एट at 5 you have to put 0.88 okay then 6, 0.961 at 6 0.961 okay so then i join them with the smooth curve i join these points with the smooth curve i have tried to make a smooth curve that the draw smooth curve of the best fit so it's a four mark question okay then he says explain whether you expect the graph to pass through the origin so i think that the graph will not pass through the origin because uh, even when uh, you you don't have any weight on this so there is some weight of the spring itself okay so due to that it can have some some vibration in it so my answer is no when there is no load spring can have vibration due to its own weight so let me check the my marking scheme so here e part so we are good with the e part then yes when the w is zero there will be no extension no oscillation allow no when w is no there will be some extension due to mass of the spring mass still the spring still has some vibration when even there is no load okay so both answer is possible yes and no both are but if if you say yes then you have to give the explanation according to yes if you say no then you have to give the explanation according to no describe the relationship between the t and the w okay so the relationship between the t and the w you see when the w is increasing the t is also increasing because you but you cannot say directly proportional because this graph is not a straight line as the w in newtons increases the t in the second also increases but non linearly the, the thing the when one thing is increasing the other thing is also increasing but the relationship is not linear it is non linear because the graph is not a straight line it's a curve so that's why we use the word non linearly Okay, so we are going to the next question. So before that, check marking scheme. Non-linear with the t increases as the w increases. A student investigates the effect of changing the length of a piece of resistance wire in a circuit containing a lamp. The resistance of the lamp is similar to the resistance of a one meter length of the wire. The circuit is set up as shown in the figure 2.1 so here you have two crocodile clips which can be moved and here you have a battery here you have a lamp this much is the current flowing right now the voltage drop here is 3 volt the emf is also 3 volt the student check that the circuit is working by touching together the crocodile clips state what the student observe if the circuit is uh, working correctly so this lamp will switch on when you will touch them each with each other the lamp will switch on circuit will be completed and the lamp will lit and it will be at a normal brightness okay describe one possible fault that prevents the circuit working correct working correctly there can be many reasons the cell might run out or the the bulb might get fused and the the wire somewhere might have broken so anything can happen this could be one possible fault that prevents the circuit working correctly i have written if the lamp gets fused path of the current will be not complete and the bulb will not lit check broken wire connection is not good lamp blown faulty i said lamp fuse faulty cells run down
He says when the circuit is working correctly, the student connects the two crocodile clips close together on the wire as shown in the figure 2.1. Describe what the student observes as the crocodile clips are slowly moved further apart on the wire. So as you, as you move the crocodile clips away from each other, the length of the wire which will be used in the circuit will gradually increase. So you, when you put the crocodile clip here, this much length of the wire will be used. So as the length of the wire will in, you increase, the resistance of that wire will also, the portion of the wire is increasing, obviously, so the resistance of the circuit is also increasing. So when the circuit, the resistance of the circuit will increase, so the voltage drop uh, across this wire will also increase. And so the, so the voltage available for the lamp will decrease. So the light, the light, the lamp will become dimmer, dimmer and further dimmer. Okay. So the lamp will become dimmer and dimmer. As the clips move away from each other, the resistance of the circuit will increase. So the lamp will become dimmer. Let's check. Lamp becomes dimmer. Okay, a circuit component is based on changing the length of the wire between the two contacts. State the name of this component. We call it rheostat. In that, if you have seen the rheostat or the variable resistor, it is basically a wire which is wound around a around a cylinder. And uh, as you move the contacts, the the length of the wire which is in, used in your circuit increases, or you can by sliding decrease it the length of the wire which is used. So due to that, the resistance of that rheostat or that variable resistor changes. It says draw its circuit symbol. Okay, okay, okay. So we say rheostat and this is the circuit symbol. We make a resistor and we put an arrow through it and that is the variable resistor. You can change its resistance. The question is, the component contains a long length of wire. Explain how the component is made small. You see its length, the wire which is used there is very long, but you wind that wire around a cylinder. So it takes then smaller space. Wire is coiled over a cylindrical frame. Wire is coiled. These are the two symbols. Okay, so we are going to the question number next. That's the question number three. He says that a teacher demonstrates the property of sound. The teacher hangs an electric bell inside a glass bell jar as shown in the figure 3.1. So here you have a glass bell jar. Here is the table. Here we have the vacuum pump. Here we have an electric bell. That electric bell is hanging through strings by this, the ceiling of this bell jar. So uh, the bell is ringing when the bell jar is placed on the metal plate. The air can then be removed from the bell jar using a vacuum pump. Explain how the bell jar must, why the bell jar must have thick walls. You see, when you will create, you will suck out the air by the vacuum pump here inside the vacuum will be created, but outside the pressure still will be equal, the atmospheric pressure. So there will be automatically uh, inward resultant force and so this bell jar must be strong enough that it can withstand that force. That's my answer. Let, let me show you the written answer I have written. Uh, so the bell jar is strong enough to bear the force due to low pressure inside and higher pressure outside. The pressure, because you, when you will use the vacuum pump inside, the pressure of the air will reduce. And outside, obviously, the atmospheric pressure still will be the atmospheric pressure. So there will be an inward a force will be created, which will be uh, into the bell jar. So the bell jar material should be able to withstand or bear that uh, force. Otherwise, the bell jar will break. withstand the high pressure force from the air outside. So our answer is right. Explain why the teacher puts a layer of the grease between the bell jar and the metal plate. So 
because this is made of glass and when you put it on the table you put some grease here between the table and the and the and the brim of the bell jar so why we put grease here we put grease here so that no air can enter no no air from here can get out no air from outside can get in so it's it's acting like a seal grease layer will act as a seal no air can can come into or out of jar i hope you understand seal the bell jar prevent air entering okay the student can see the bell vibrating and can hear it ringing describe and explain what the student hear as the air is removed so when you when you will switch on the vacuum pump and you will start uh, taking out the air from the bell jar and you will see that the, when you press the button the bell the, the electric bell will start ringing and you will be able to hear the sound of the electric bell but as the the air will be taken out the pressure inside the bell jar will reduce a vacuum you are trying to create in the bell jar so gradually gradually the sound of the bell will get fainter and fainter and at the end you will not be able to hear any sound from the bell jar although the bell you will see that it's ringing first he will hear sound gradually the loudness of that sound will decrease and at the end obviously you will hear no sound so i just forgot to write here at the end you will hear no sound the sound will become very faint so let me check sound gradually becomes quieter sound cannot travel through a vacuum or require medium okay so here add a sentence that uh, because when you will create vacuum there the sound will not be able to travel through the vacuum when the air is removed the student can still see the bell vibrating state what is what this experiment demonstrate about the light so it means that the light can travel through the vacuum but the sound cannot travel through the vacuum it requires medium for traveling light can travel through a vacuum does not require medium okay so that is good explain why the teacher hangs the bell from the string uh, inside the bell jar rather than standing the bell on the metal plate if you put the the electric bell on the metal plate so obviously when the bell will ring it will create vibrations in the metal plate and and the, the vibrations will be um, will be given to the metal plate and the metal will made plate will give the vibrations to the table and the sound will start coming out so we hang them the 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 bell with the strings inside the bell jar so that its vibrations cannot come out uh, so its vibration could not reach out of the jar if you put it on the metal plate it's, it will make the metal plate vibrate so that those vibrations will come out and the, you will able to hear the sound hopefully you understand sound vibrations can travel through the metal plate or we'll see yes that's what i mean to say question number 4 uh, two students decide to compare their running shoes to see which has the better grip they place one shoe on a board one end of the board is lifted slowly until the shoe starts to slide as shown so what they have done they have put a shoe on this board and gradually he lifts the board upward from one end so he is creating a ramp here so at a certain height or a certain angle with the bench the shoe will slide start to slide downward this is repeated with the shoe from the other student explain why the student lifts the end of the board slowly uh, because they want to exactly find out at what angle uh, of the board with the bench the shoe starts to uh, slide because we are looking for that point when the shoe starts to slide if you do it fastly what will happen the shoe will fall down 
the shoe will move very quickly you will not understand that exactly at what height the shoe started sliding so let me show you my result my answer a student lifts the board slowly so he can find exact level after which the shoe slips okay then their question is using the figure 4.1 measure the angle between the board and the bench so put a protector here the cross here here of the protector should be here here should be the zero and from here count how much is this angle i have done this and i have already measured it and my answer is 22 degrees so let's have a look at the marking scene 22 degrees <clears throat> Okay. One of the students uh, measure the angle between the board and the bench with the protector. So just one practical difficulty that the student has in taking this measurement. You see, the protector size is quite small, and this board and this bench they are quite large. The protector is very small here. another problem can be to keep the board steady to, to measure the angle protector is very small as compared to the board okay the protector which you have in your geometry box is very small this board and the bench they are quite large so let's check any one sensible suggestion for example protector has edge protector is small deviance close together alignment of the zero difficult board sags board may move yeah to keep the board steady is a thing the other student does not have a protector so suggest uh, how he can take measurement to determine the angle so find this height and find this vertical this vertical height and this horizontal and then use the formula tan theta is equals to perpendicular by base and find the theta by using the trigonometric ratio okay so find this vertical and this horizontal thing or you can find this and you can find this base you can use anything sin cos tan so you have you have three sides of that triangle just measure them and you can apply the trigonometric ratios board makes triangle with the ground measure the height of the hand from the bench and the horizontal part also use tan theta find the vertical and the horizontal side of that triangle and then you can use tan theta to calculate the theta so tan theta is equals to the height the vertical height divided by the horizontal okay so describe how that's the next part my you two sides of the triangle and use the trigonometric formula may be shown on the diagram yes i hope you understand this it says describe how the student determine which shoe has the better grip the sh the which shoe has the better grip the shoe whose start slipping at a larger angle is a, has better grip shoe which slides at a higher or larger angle has better grip so let's check the marking scheme so my dear students uh, we have completed the may june 2012 physics 505441 paper and i want to thank you you that you have taken out time to watch this full video i hope that this video will help you to improve uh, your physics concept and help you to solve this paper if you find this video interesting and informative and helpful do share the link of this video on to your facebook account on to your twitter account and on to your <clears throat> instagram also share the link of this video with your junior students i have tried my best to explain you the concepts if i have made any mis mistake just forgive me it's a great blessing for me that uh, i am able to help
some people around the world. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day. God bless you.